Welcome to uh, Northern Lights NU uh, vlog. And this is our second guest. And this is Belly, the elder, and he also works at our school, but I'll let him um, introduce himself too. Um, so our first question to you, Billy, is just tell us like a little bit of background about yourself. Uh, well, first of all, I am Inuk, not Inuit, but Inuk, a single Inuk person. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I was born in Achvet, and uh, today I am uh, 66 years old, and I have been working at the school for the past 43 years. Wow, that's really commendable. That's a long time. Uh, in 2006, I uh, was trained to be a counselor by Landera University. I was also hired by the Department of Education uh, to uh, uh, to work with the Oleyakta curriculum, to be the coordinator for the Oleyakta curriculum. That went very, very well, so and that is where the IQ came from. Oh, okay. And um, thanks to all the elders that put it together. Um, so that, that can just kind of lead us into, so these IQ principles, I know I'm taking a course on it next, next week during PD week, mm -hmm. and it's you know super important to, to implement um, these Inuit IQ in with our teaching. So can you just give us a little bit more information on the IQ principles? Well, the IQ, uh, they are passed down from uh, generation to generation through families. Mm -hmm. And it all has to do with respect and respecting yourself, respecting others. Okay. And, uh, and respecting the land, I think, too, right? Everything, uh, yeah. respecting everything, because uh, in the in the in the uh, knowledge, uh, everything is alive. Every everything that we see is alive. Um, so it's about respect, and like, what would some of the other ones be? Well, there's respect, and there's uh, like working together. Okay. And there's also. Uh, Serving, uh, there's also being of service in our communities and anywhere mm -hmm. where where you can be helped mm -hmm. another person. Mm -hmm. And these principles, they are often incorporated into the education system, but also the government, correct? Mm -hmm. So uh, at our school, at the middle school, uh, we are doing our best to teach our students the Inuit IQ, the six principles, and the guiding. Uh, principles of the Inuit, and um, one of the things that we really, really try to do with our students is to teach them. Like you know how um, when when teachers teach, just you have to do this, you, know, mm -hmm. you have to mm -hmm. read this, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. But in the Inuit uh, teaching way, it, it 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 is for us to watch mm -hmm. what what. Uh, our parents were doing, what our uncles were doing, what our mothers were doing, and that's how we were taught. Like our mean, example. My, my age group. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's how, how we were taught. And today's children, uh, they have to read, uh, they have to write, and they have to... In an attitude and in English. And mm -hmm. they have to do a lot of work to get a few little lines done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, for example, I, I hunt a lot, and uh, my dad did not tell me, like when he was teaching me, you're doing it wrong, you have to do it this way. He, he didn't teach me like that. He, mm -hmm. he taught me with me watching him yeah. do, do things like... By example. Uh, mm -hmm. Skinning or shooting or like being out in the land, like mm -hmm. teaching me there's no names and all that. And uh, I learned everything by watching my dad, my uncles, my grandfathers. Yeah, and so that kind of leads us into your family because mm -hmm. you now have a very extended family coming down from you that you are now teaching. Yes, I have. I'm, I'm going to be a very busy grandfather because uh, I have 14 grandsons. 
What? Oh, yeah. gosh. That's amazing. And I have turned two grandsons into hunters. Uh, they can now hunt on their own. Oh. Uh, How old are they? The older one is 14 now, and the younger one is 13. They're brothers. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I've been going out with the younger one for many years, like when he was a small kid. Mm -hmm. And that is why he's more knowledgeable than his older brother. Mm -hmm. But uh, they can now hunt on their own. Mm -hmm. they, I have taught, taught them the safety of the, the gun. Uh, mm -hmm. The snow drifts, uh, in case the GPS stops working or uh, their communication system fail. Mm -hmm. and, uh, my uh, great granddaughter uh, is already watching grandma when she's cutting up uh, material. Mm -hmm. She is just she lays down on the floor, her grandma, and just watch. Mm -hmm. um, so family is very important, um, obviously, to you and, I think, to the Inuit people. So that's not the only thing that she's learning. She's, she's also learning from sisters and aunts. Uh, yeah, I'm curious. <laughs> the yes is, yes, they will learn English, mm -hmm. right? which is uh, the biggest thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes and no. Um, the. Uh, the other yes is that they are learning from parents, like, like we still teach by watching. Mm -hmm. And when they go to school, they have to go through paper and write and so on. And the no is, um, well, I guess uh, it's not every day that they go to school, right? Mm -hmm. And they miss out a lot, a lot on school stuff. Um, and. Uh, and there are so many distractions now. For example, they let mm -hmm. a student can now pick up a cell phone and go to the other side of the world and look at whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And they can get into all kinds of, like, everything, mm -hmm. really. The world has opened up to them. Mm -hmm. The need comes up to call the authorities. Yes, I will call, but mm -hmm. my main line is protecting the students. Mm -hmm. protecting, protecting them from other students, bullies, whatever, mm -hmm. protecting them from you guys, mm -hmm. make sure they're treated right, mm -hmm. they have to be respectful, yeah. and uh, protect them from anyone who might mistreat them or take advantage of them or, or something like that. So like concerns mm -hmm. in the community, maybe. Okay. That's my job. It's, uh, a, a lot of my work is confidential, mm -hmm. unless uh, I have to. Uh, involve the authorities, the right. social services, or mental health, or the RCMP. Right. Um, what is the biggest challenge you have faced, um, I don't know, living in, in Ardiat, or um, with your work, or with your family, or anything? What, what is the biggest challenge? Okay. Uh, the biggest challenge that we faced was uh, uh, just before 2000. Uh, our community was plagued with suicides, mm -hmm. huge suicides, oh. so many of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it became very hard for the whole community because there were so many uh, youth committing suicide. Oh. And the biggest, challenge yeah, that, the biggest challenge that I faced is uh, my daughter, uh, Charlene, she was in that situation, ready to kill herself and so on. Oh my goodness. But I intervened, I talked to her, and uh, this was because uh, two of her friends uh, committed suicide a day apart, oh. very mm. close friends. That's so weird. from that, she almost broke down. She even tried uh, suicide, but talking to her and making her understand that life must go on. And that's Whatever, like whatever's happening here in our community, us, we are alive, we must go on. Mm -hmm. And I talked to her about, uh, look, you know the youth better than I do because you are the youth. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I talked to her about 
look, look for something that the youth like, something that the youth will uh, gather together, do something together. Mm -hmm. And then um, one day she came up with a, a dance fest, a, a dance program. Oh, okay. Oh, awesome. So one day she came up with that. Uh, she uh, wanted to get the youth dancing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but there was no money, right, mm -hmm. to do something, so, so we helped her the whole, once she talked about that to us, we all, the sisters and the mother, like the family, we all rooted it and helped her plan. Mm -hmm. So we came up with a, a dance group that can kind of get the funding mm -hmm. from the people. Mm -hmm. So she got a, a small business license uh, to do uh, dance challenges. Huh, that is awesome. How old was she at this time? I think she might have been what I'm not quite sure, but I think she was either 18, 19, mm -hmm. or 20, something like okay. that. That's such a brilliant idea. Yeah. And uh, it was a hit for our community. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, it became a big hit for the community, and it, it brought people together. Mm -hmm. The youth together. Mm -hmm. uh, that was her first um, strategy, working with the youth, mm -hmm. and then her second strategy was working with the middle age, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the third one was working with the, the people like me, the middle age. <laughs> That's elders. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, once she got that uh, outline, and then we helped her plan mm -hmm. what to do. Mm -hmm. And from that out came the Ukutak Daughters Dance Fest. And uh, it was a hit in our community, and the other communities heard about it, so they told us to go to the other, oh. other communities to mm -hmm. do the same thing with them. And today, what a success uh, story. Wow. And today, uh, each community has their own dance groups now, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, square dance or hip hop or. Whatever. You must be so proud of her, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I was very proud because she almost lost her life. Oh. I was past the um, period where there was a lot of suicides. Did you see that it was... It went down. Mm -hmm. Not only that, then we started having students graduating. Wow. That's so many lives touched. Because it is a, it is a phenomenon when, um, in a community when um, a cluster of suicides happen, it is a phenomenon that it kind of, I don't know if, I don't, you would tell no more than me, but it's almost like kids see it as, as this is, or even young people or whoever see it as the solution, and then it just kind of, grows and grows unfortunately. Yes, that may be so. But what Charlie thought was from the inside. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. He uh, I guess to to work with someone, uh, to be connected with someone. Mm -hmm. And uh, she succeeded. Uh, she did that and I was very, very proud. What a, an incredible success story. I just think that that is. And it connects so beautifully to what you were talking about earlier about the IQ principles. I mean, she was showing that collaboration and consensus, the respect, the service, right? Helping others. I mean, she just embodied all of it. It's beautiful. Yes, and then uh, one of the good things that came out from that was other communities were also asking us to come to their community to do, to start the same thing, like help them start the same thing in their communities. Mm -hmm. I can stop or it can slow down. Right. And yeah. today it has really slowed down. Mm -hmm. uh, the last suicide that we heard was about what, three, two, three years ago oh. now? Oh, that's very positive. That's a huge change. That's, yeah, that's awesome. So I think that kind of led into that. The you, success? Yeah, yeah the success sure. question that we had next. So that's awesome. Um, so let's go into this one. Um, Everyone in life has challenges and obviously being 
so far north, I mean, there's challenges with the land and the weather and um, just different things in the community. So what keeps you motivated and encouraged when you are struggling or when you feel like giving up? What keeps you going? Oh, my dad. Mm. Oh, it's a little embarrassing, but I was 17 years old, and I was still sleeping right next to my dad. <laughs> That's you know, awesome. I love that. Holding on to him. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Or my dad holding me like a little boy mm -hmm. at 17. What does, what does hunting mean to you? Yeah, why is it so oh, it's feeding my family, mm -hmm. keeping uh, country food at home, mm -hmm. not only for my family, but for people who don't have like hunting gear, like mm -hmm. ski or boat or ATV, uh, and the very large families, uh, like over 10 in the family, mm -hmm. and I give uh, food to people uh, that yes. need it. And um, that is why, yeah, that is, that's what I do because my dad taught me to share my chance with people. Mm -hmm. And right now I am looking after our elders, to make sure they have country food, like fish, or caribou, or seal, or muktatki, the, the whale. Mm -hmm. And I do my best to, to hunt for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, those nine caribou I shot, they're all given away. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. They're all given away, so uh, we're ready for another hunt. Mm -hmm. What do you do with the, um, the hide? Right now, the hide is just for uh, cushion. Oh, okay. In your uh, in your sled. Or? Mm, mm -hmm. uh, for clothing, uh, the skins. Uh, they they we start using using the skins in in August. Mm -hmm. Because uh, by Sept by end of September they're going to be too thick. Oh, okay. The hair. Mm -hmm. My friend Derek asked this question. I think it was Derek. How thick is the ice on the Hudson's Bay? When I was a child, it was like over 10 feet. Mm -hmm. But the last uh, cod derby down at our bay, it was a little, just a little over five feet. Wow, that's a significant mm -hmm. difference. What do, you, what do you attribute that difference to? Probably, I guess the, the warming. The global warming, I think. Have you noticed a corresponding change in any animal behavior or availability of certain animals because of this change? We are starting to see a lot of difference in animals. Uh, they are not on time or they are way behind oh. on their schedule migrations or, or something like that. Oh, wow, that's interesting. So there's a big change. Like, uh, for example, uh, in February, we, we call February Avunivi, where caribou should be all in one area mm -hmm. for the winter feeding on on, on, on the land. Mm -hmm. And not go anywhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, each February, it, it should be Avunivi. Caribou should be in one area, but they're already scattered around now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's caribou down there, there's caribou up there. Caribou, mm -hmm. People are getting caribou just not far from here. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they should start moving by the end of March, but it's not even end of February and they're already walking around. They should be in one area. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, that's so, so when you went hunting the other weekend and you got nine caribou, how far did you have to go from town to do that? We went uh, 78 miles. Uh, that, that's where we first saw the caribou, and then we uh, went out a little further, and we were 124 miles east, north, northeast. Wow, that's a long ways. <laughs> wow. Do you guys carry fuel? You must carry fuel with you yes. for the snowmobiles. Yeah. Um, I think we're gonna go to this one here.
So what does being an elder in this community mean to you or to the other people? Oh, I am very fortunate uh, because uh, when I was working for the uh, Community Education Council, which later became um, Community Education Society, and then later on they became District Education Authority, mm -hmm. and that's uh, when I had my own program like land skills, and I did that for 25 years, mm -hmm. uh, teaching land stuff to mm -hmm. students whether they were a boy or a girl. Mm -hmm. It was my uh, land, land scouts um, program. Mm -hmm. And the students that were, were learning from it, like when I, when, I, when, I, when I went out with them, when they were teenagers and so on, they did learn some skills and so on. Mm -hmm. And today, those same boys or girls that I uh, hunted with, mm -hmm. they sometimes just surprise us. They, bringing their, some of their, their country food, like mm -hmm. something that they've built, they, they, they would bring it to us. Mm -hmm. oh, beautiful. So it's cyclical, it comes mm -hmm. yeah, to you. That is wonderful. Can I just ask a real quick question? Because we, we've been using the term elder quite a bit, um, but is there a particular age that somebody becomes an elder, or is it more because of the role that you have in the community? Oh, I am now an elder, but uh, I, I can, I can now speak with the elders, sit down with the elders and talk to them, but I still have to, I still don't have authority. Mm. Only after I am 70. Oh. That is when 70. I can. You can say whatever the heck you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's I, interesting. I didn't know. I, 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 I am now with the elders, but uh, I still have no authority if there's other elders. Mm -hmm. uh, in this room. Mm -hmm. I've um, heard the number that 50% um, of the community is under the age of 25. That is true. Mm -hmm. That is true. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean as far as um, elders? Is there, is, is are people just not living as, as long or is there just a big child boom? That is a, uh, well, I think that would be very hard to answer because there's also right and wrong in there. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I, I forget which year, uh, we had uh, a baby boom in our mm -hmm. community, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like children, having children mm -hmm. in those days, in those years. Um, it's still going, it's still happening, but not as fast as uh, the years before. Mm -hmm. What do you wish that the rest of Canada, Southerners, knew about you or Inuit culture or this community? What do you wish? If you could tell them anything, what would you wish to tell them? Well, a couple of years, couple of years back, I was uh, doing the, um, the tourist stuff. Um, and we had a lot of, so many guests, um, for the uh, for the tourism thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it seems like they they were all interested in the way the land is or what animals there are. Mm -hmm. They were not too keen on how people are or what people do. Uh, they just wanted to see the northern lights, the land, or animals. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. and um, I think uh, if. Southerners want to learn about uh, the Inuit culture or the Inuit way of doing things, whether it's hunting or sewing or whatever. Mm -hmm. One of the things uh, that they can do is to make, to to become a friend to an Inuit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's the best way to learn. It's not a big relationship. Um, if you go to the tourism companies or stuff like that, mm -hmm. they, they will show you different things mm -hmm. about Inuit things. Mm -hmm. But if you made a friend with an Inuk, uh, whether it's a man or a woman, that's the best way to learn um, the Inuit way of life because you will, you will be spending time with the Inuit family. Right. How they are, what they do, mm -hmm. what they eat, uh, how they interact with other family members, and so on. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I think that would be the best way for a Southerners to learn about Inuit is to become a friend, a friend to an Inuit. Yeah. Like one time uh, at our school, uh, we were adopting, adopting teachers. Um, oh, okay. Like one family would adopt a teacher, mm -hmm. and to be with, and that teacher be with the family as long as they want. Oh. And uh, oh. there was one such teacher that was adopted. She learned how to sew, mm -hmm. make you know, make parkas and make mitts. Mm -hmm. And there were other uh, men that were adopted to families. Some became hunters. Uh, mm -hmm. Some became very good at. Uh, fixing stuff like ATVs or outdoor or whatever, like mm -hmm. uh, becoming a very good uh, small engine mechanic mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. Yeah. It's so beautiful. I love that. And I think that's what we're trying to do even with this podcast is just every time we get to meet mm -hmm. someone from this community, we're trying to build that relationship and get to know people on a personal level. Um, it's way better than any tourism board. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not condemning the, uh, the tourism. No, no, because, but it's uh, just different. It's different. It's different. Right. They work different. Yeah. yeah. Different goals, right? Different objectives. Yeah. So, um, another question. What do you hope to be doing yourself in five to ten years? Oh, I always joke. You'll know. At work. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work till somebody kicks me out. <laughs> <laughs> It's very hard to lead the students. It's mm -hmm. like a couple of years ago, I, I was saying, I'm going to retire, I'm going to quit, I'm, I'm done. I'm still here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Still kicking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess in um, four years, you'll become an official elder. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In the community. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, that's a beautiful future. I think that's going to be wonderful. Um, and so, last but not least, what is your hope for the future of the people of this community? I, my dream always is like, I hope everybody do teamwork. Mm -hmm. That's where all the success come from. If there's a good teamwork and whatever, something nice will come out. Everybody plays their part. Kind mm -hmm. of. Yeah, working together, each mm -hmm. with their own gifts and talents and abilities, they all contribute. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what we have been trying to do in our school for the past many years trying to put everybody like getting a teamwork uh, in our school so our students can do better and uh, I don't know, uh, have better help and all that from whoever's working there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay, that's wonderful. Thank, thank you very yeah, much. Thank you so much. For joining us tonight. So Billy came over on his uh, snowmobile tonight and uh, to talk with us in our apartment here. So um, uh, we just really want to, we're just so appreciative and I know that lots of people are going to be so interested in what you have to say. Definitely. So. Uh, one day um, I'm going to show you what my daughter did. Uh, uh, my daughter Charlene, uh, she also works at the, uh, the gold mine. Oh. She uh, operates those big monster trucks. Wow. Well, I love cool. her already. Yeah, she sounds that's, awesome. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Okay. Thank you very much, Billy. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>